Hanukkah are wonderful days. It's amazing how much we can achieve in Hanukkah. It's uh, the nights are so long. Rabbeinu, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, he called those nights the Gilden Nights, the Golden Nights. They're so long and you have so much time. Like from the time you light your candles and into the night, it's, it's so early, it's, uh, the, the night comes so early, so much time, kids are going to sleep and everything is calm and relaxed and you have time. You can go and do long with Buddha Duyo, talking to Hashem. Yesterday in the Buddha Dut, Hashem woke me up to see there is such a, a um, such a, um, an amazing truth in, in, in what that we're doing that it's we have different mitzvot, we have different obligations like one of the things you need to do, you need to keep Shabbat great, so now if you're able to keep Shabbat or if you're not able unfortunately to keep Shabbat it doesn't change the fact that you also need to eat kosher, right? but if you're also not able to eat kosher or if it's hard for you to eat kosher or if you do, if you eat kosher, only mehadrin it doesn't change the fact that you need to pray shacharit in the morning when you wake up, that you need to wash your, it. Like every mitzvah is joining the puzzle, but it's also a picture by itself. It's like you need to put filin, you need to keep Shabbat, you need to eat kasher, you need to light the candles, you need to... But with no connection with one to each other, they're all standing up by themselves. So the mitzvah of faith to believe in one creator, to live your life with the one... It's something that is also part of all of Torah mitzvot. You need to believe in Hashem when you put filin. You need to believe in Hashem when you keep Shabbat. But also you can just believe in Hashem. It's written on Avraham Avinu, Vayamen Bashem, Vayachashba Lo Litzdaka. That when he believed in Hashem, it was such an important thing. And he just believed in Hashem. So we can all follow the footsteps of our ancestors, of Avraham Avinu, the head of all believers, and just to believe in Hashem. That's the beginning. And that's the beginning of all of the obligations also. And to do that, it's not only if you put filin so you can believe in Hashem. No, I'm not keeping Shabbat so I cannot believe. No, there's no connection. You can spend your life glued to Hashem Barach, attached to Hashem Barach, face to face with Hashem Barach, 100% with Him. Like an angel you can live your life, that you are shaking from holy fear from the Creator. Like you feel His love in your bones, inside of your soul. You feel your soul shining from inside and from the other side, you're not able to function. You're not able to wake up in the morning, you're not able to eat kasher, you're afraid to tell your parents that you want to convert. You can, whatever you go through in life, like you can be... Non-Jew, you know, no connection to Judaism at all, but the Creator, center of my life, the soul that, that, that shines from inside, and, and, and you can be a man of God, a person of God, with no connection to the Judaism. And that's how Hashem made it to be. And that's the beginning, that's the first step. When Hashem Itbarach is coming to us and telling us, Anuchi Hashem Elokecha. First of all, the first commandment from the ten holy commandments. I am your God. That's it. Let's see you keeping that. Keep that thing. Go with that. Go with the basics. Go with the first step. Anuchi Hashem Elokecha. Lo yelecha elokim achirim al panai. Don't replace me. Know that I'm with you. I love you. I'm with you. Go with that, I'm telling you, if you will go with that, you, you, you can believe the change that you will feel in your life. Because you don't need anything, because if you're hanging yourself, if your closeness to the Creator depends in your Rabbi, depends in your Tefillin, depends in your Mitzvot, depends in Shabbat, depends in your Kashrut, so when one of those things will fail, and they will, they must. Because like I told you, even the most righteous rabbi, the most righteous man, that you will try to attach yourself to him, even him, he is coming for you into your life from outside. Even your rabbi, even the righteous man of the generation, the most purest person around, look at him. Wow, I love you. I want to be close to you. I care about you. You gave me my life. Great. Where is he? 
over there, outside. Where is Hashem? Inside. Even if that rabbi is answering to you and clarifying things for you from inside, the information is coming from outside to your inside. But Hashem Barach, He is the only thing that His source is inner. Even your rabbi, His source is external for you. Where is He starting in your life? How did you saw him when he came into the room? When you went into the yeshiva and you saw him, he was sitting over there. He's external, he's physical. Even if he's gotten a fantastic, awesome, great, generous, loving, spiritual soul. Great, that's his center. That is your connection. That is your love based on that. But where is he standing for you outside? He's coming to your life, into your life from the external side. It doesn't mean bad. It's like the most healthiest food. It's the best, uh, 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 more, the best information, most gentle and, and sophisticated and wonderful and great information, wisdom, support that I received in life. But where is it coming from? From a different place than your soul. It's still an external thing. Only your soul, only the inner connection to the Creator is the one and only thing that is coming from inside. This is why most of our effort and all of our focus is supposed to be on that. We need to use the external world to focus our inside. So, okay, my rabbi, I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to learn from you how to find my soul. Oh, Torah and Mitzvot, wonderful. I'm going to keep them with the intention to know him and to recognize him inside, in my life. The source of blessing, the source of my life. I'm going to eat healthy food. I'm going to eat kosher food. I'm going to go only to good places that will bring me to my quiet, to my health, to my relaxation, to be calm and relax and balance that I will be able to listen to my inner voice, to find the roots of my soul. All of the world been created for that, that you will find yourself. That's mitzvah emunah. That is the meaning of the word emunah. Don't forget Hashem. Don't forget Hashem. How you remember something? Inside, not outside. When you open your eyes and you see candlelights, menorah, tefillin, Beit Knesset, synagogues, holy people, righteous people, all of those things are distracting your thoughts from Hashem. Maybe they're also reminding you of Hashem somehow, but they can also distract your thoughts from Hashem. Because now you can lose your mind. No, we must drink four cups of wine. And where is the matzot? And I can't believe it. What are you doing? You put the chasa, the lettuce on this thing. What? No. What, what happened? You're supposed to remember Hashem in Pesach. No, we must turn on the menorah, the Chanukiah, early. It's Shkia already. What's going on? Where are the children? Why didn't put the oil? Relax. That's not the holiday. That's not the Chag. That's not the purpose of the Chag. You can lose Hashem because of the menorah, because of the Chanukiah. You can lose your mind because of... It's time! It's time! No, there's no time! Relax! <laughs> Relax! The Biale Rebbe is turning on the Chanukiah in the middle of the night. The, the, the Admor... I don't remember the, the, the... I don't remember his name. One of the Admorim. He's finishing Shabbat three days later. What's his name? Amshinov. The Amshinov Rebbe. He is doing Havdalah in, in, in Tuesday. Really? That's how he's keeping Shabbat all Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, he's keeping Shabbat. In Tuesday afternoon, he's doing Avdalah. On the cup, with the candles, smelling the incense, Bissamim. That's how he keeps Shabbat. You think you're wiser than him? Yeah, I understand. Trust me, he's got his tradition. He's also one of the students of the Baal Shem Tov. He knows exactly what he's doing. Actually, he can be wiser than you. You don't understand what's going on in the world. In the world, there is freedom. The Karati Lachem Dror, Kadash Baruch is the creator, is saying, I call you for freedom. You need to demand your freedom. 
even while serving Hashem. You don't need to become Haredi, Hasid, follow the rules. No, I'm Sfaradi. No, I'm Ashkenazi. No, what, which book? What's supposed to do? What am I? Relax. You just forgot Hashem. What are you talking about? If your hands are shaking from stress and you don't know what to do and it's time, which candle I supposed to turn on, to light on first? Relax. You know that halakhically if you turn on one candle in Hanukkah, you, all, you, you fulfilled your obligation? That's it. That's it. Of course you want to do something more great. You want to learn more great. You want to follow a certain custom, certain minhad. Great! With all of the love and, 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 and freedom in the world. Do as much as you can. Everything that you will find that it's in your power, in your hand to keep, to do, do it. Great! But don't kill yourself. Don't kill your wife. How many houses fell apart because of that craziness? I heard in the beginning of my tshuva that there is a minhag, that you need to make circles around the table while saying the kiddush and singing Shalom Aleichem and Eshet Chayl. And like a crazy person, I was walking in circles for 15 minutes surrounding the table. And it's okay. If you understand what you're doing and if you really feel like doing it, so do it. But your wife needs to sit for 10-15 minutes to look at you making circles alone with a sitter around the table. She, she, she didn't want to marry some, you know, worship, person that worship idols, making circles and, and, and I, she, it's not. If you really, if that faith, if that understanding was part of your understanding of your wisdom, if it would be you, your wife would understand it. She say, wow, you don't know. I have an angel in my house. He's going, he's doing. You must see, there is a story on the wife of Rabbi Zusha that she woke up one of the mornings. The house, house was empty. Kids are walking barefoot. Horrible poverty in Ukraine, walking uh, uh, in snow and, and freezing cold of the winter. She went outside to look for some um, uh, six pieces of wood to, to, to warm something, the house, a little bit, to make something, you know, she didn't have nothing, and she's going out from their backyard to look for some small sticks for, of wood, and she fell into sadness and sorrow with her torn clothes and sorrow, seeing her kids hungry, and it's so cold, and look at her, what she's doing in her life. And then she heard her husband, Rabbi Zusha, singing the, 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 the Psuke de Zimra, the verses of Tehillim, the chapters of Tehillim that we're singing every Shacharit, supposed to sing, but he was singing them. And she was going with her sadness, picking and, you know, banting and, 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 and picking those uh, pieces of, 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 of wood and, and felt the sorrow of her poverty and why I need to have life like that. And then she heard him singing, Sukede Zimra. And she said to Hashem, he, she heard her husband singing, praising Hashem. So she said, but if I can hear music like that, Praises like those for my husband, so it's all worthy for me. Okay, great. If she lives with an angel, that when she hears him singing to Hashem Barach, it fills her being from inside, and she feels the voice of the Shekhinah, and the presence of the Creator, great, do that. But if she, if her husband go, he, where, where is he? He's in shul. What he's doing in shul? He's in the cafeteria laughing with his friends. She won't feel that satisfaction from, from her poverty. She won't be able to enjoy the, the struggles of life. There was a righteous man, his name was Rabbi Avram ben Rab Nachman. Every Motzei Shabbat after Sudar Vi'it, he would take a bag, a basket with books, one loaf of bread, a bottle of water, and, and go and go. His wife always asked him, where are you going? What are you doing? Where are you, what, 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 what's your plans? He said, I have a very important meeting with a very rich person and, and, and you will see salvations and don't worry. And every Motzei Shabbat he would go like that and he would come back Friday after Mikveh to the house after probably even after Mincha only to keep Shabbat. And all of the week, he was in the forest, serving Hashem Barach in ways that we cannot understand, 
praying and learning and, and, and fasting and whatever he was doing. A whole week, one loaf of bread, one bottle of water, and pile of books. That's it. And he would come. And when he would come to the house, his wife, she was screaming at him. Again, you haven't done anything. And, but her children once asked her, Mother, if you're so upset with him when he's coming back to the house in Friday, so why you send him and you let him go every Motzei Shabbat? You know that it's going to be the same. He will go again for a whole week and he will come back Friday noon and, 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 and to accept Shabbat. Why you let him go? So she said, when he's coming to the house, he gives a f such a great feeling, such an amazing feeling, like Hashem Idbrach is with us and I can feel the loving kindness of the Creator in the house when he's coming. So how can I stop him from doing his thing? So... If you're able to bring that amazing feeling that you're one with Hashem Barach to the house, so great! Your wife also will have the power to, to be there with you and whatever. But if you're not, if you're not holding those levels, so how can you expect your wife to be there with you? You cannot! So what's the effort? What, what's the point? What we need to do? We need to bring Hashem Barach really into our lives. And not just to play. Not to act, not to claim, no, I'm Haredi, no, I'm going to the shul now, no, I'm going to pray, no, I need to catch Shachrit, no, I need to catch a minyan. Relax. Where is Hashem in all of this play, in all of this game? If really you will connect yourself to Hashem in Barach, when you will come back home, the home, the house will shine. Your wife will be happy to see you. If God will be happy from your work, your wife will be happy from you, your children will be happy from you, your parnasa will flow into your house, everything will be good. The fact that your house is, is destroying you, is breaking you, that all of the time you have insultings and rebukes and, and, and struggles, it's because that Hashem still got something to tell you. If life is rebuking you, it's because that the Creator still rebukes you. So if the Creator still rebukes you, means that He's got something to tell you and you're not listening. So what you should do, you need to listen. Move your side curls a little bit. Open your ears and listen. Listen to the voice of your soul. Listen to the voice of your neshama. Listen to the voice of your soul that is talking to you from inside. It's so easy. People are afraid to deal, to confront themselves. People are afraid to look at the mirror. People are afraid to look at inside of their own souls and to see who that they are. Okay, so you're going to see that you're lazy. Okay, so you're going to remember all of these insultings from your parents. Okay, so you're going to remember those humiliations, horrible humiliations that you went through in life. I see that, I understand that, I also been through those shames. I also went in that very, very frightening path. I've been to those places, but I confront my fears, and it was only strengthening me. In the end of, of that battle, I went stronger. It gave me powers. Because if you will check yourself and you're going to realize that that poor person, broken soul, the one that was humiliated so much, that was insulted so many times, that was disappointed so many times, and you're still standing on your feet, you're still standing stable, you're still able to continue and to do more things in life, and you haven't committed suicide, and you're not drunk and drinking every night a, a half a bottle of whiskey, and even if you are, if you're still holding on with a half a bottle of whiskey in your head every night, there is something special in you. Most of the people are falling after three, four days like that. And you're holding on for years. You want to drink something? We must be strong. We must be strong to believe in our own strength, in our own power, the power of faith, the power of hope that we have inside of ourselves. And with that power, we need to go and to rescue others. And to go and to shine to everyone, to tell them, Hey, it's so easy. Close your eyes. Focus in the light of your soul. Look what you have inside of your being, inside of your body. You're not a simple person. You're a holy soul. You're a spiritual soul. You're a spiritual being. 
You have an inner connection that the Creator can open the sea for you. Tear the sea for 12 ways, 12 lanes, just for you. Three people had to marry that the sea will be open for them. More than that in other places. But when Am Israel were standing in front of the Red Sea, so three people were there. It was Moshe, it was Yosef HaTzadik, that was, he was, he was still in his, um, on his bed, in his coffin, and Nachshon ben Aminadav. Nachshon ben Aminadav, he is the best example. Nachshon ben Aminadav, it's a regular person, it's a random person that decides to jump into the water. What are you doing? No prophecy, no promise about that, nothing. Just, yes, I'm going to do that. Why are you doing that crazy thing? Because... Yosef, he died already. Moshe is praying somewhere. And we're lost. And we need a solution. So what Nachshon ben Aminadav is doing? Jumping into the water. One step after the other. Another one meter in. Another two meters in. Another three meters in. Waves are climbing. And he's getting all wet. His knees, his thighs, his chest, his neck, his shoulders. Water reaching his mouth. He starts choking then Hashem opened the sea for him. For him. Because he was, you want to say brave. I'll say crazy. Really? Crazy. Who is jumping into the water with no promise, with no prophecy? The promise that he had, the guarantee that he had, was his inner trust and inner faith in the Creator. He just knew God will not going to disappoint me. So he was counting on his own assumptions, on his own understandings. Moshe didn't tell him, hey, do that, don't worry, I'm going to back you up. No, no one. He was just seeing the reality, no salvation from here, no salvation from there. Okay, so what are we doing? We're going to count on Hashem or what? Yes. And he took a decision, jumped into the water. And that's exactly what that we're doing here today. That's exactly what that we are doing here today with our amazing Amuna project. That's exactly what that you need to do in your own life to develop your own project or to join us in our project. Because you must trust on yourself. I was standing in front of rabbis. I was standing in front of my family. I was standing in front of my financial situation and reality. I was standing and confronting myself and my own fears and my parents' opinions. And I was facing all of them. And I said to myself, okay, what are you going to choose? There was one thing that couldn't move away from my eyes. It was your souls. It was the souls that are seeking for the Creator. And I asked my rabbi, I went to him and I asked him, I told him, is it true, my conclusion, is it right, that in all of those wonderful 12 years that you taught me, that you were teaching me, you told me one main thing, that I need to go and rescue all of Am Israel, to save, to bring all of the world back to Hashem. So he told me, yes, that was his answer. I asked him, is the bottom line of all of those 12 years was that I supposed to bring all of the world back to Hashem? He answered, yes. Maybe he was wrong. Maybe he regrets saying that. But that's what he said. He said, yes. So I told him, so now, even if you're going to tell me to stop, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to go and bring them all back to Hashem. No matter what will happen, I'm going with your torch to shine the world, to illuminate the world with what that you taught me. That that is my mission in life. That that is my goal. And guys, I'm going to do that. I'm not backing off. I'm doing it. And not because I'm special. Just because I'm crazy. I'm going all the way. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of poverty. I'm not afraid to suffer. I've been through all of those things already. I died so many times. I was so poor so many nights. I was so broken. I was so sad. I was so depressed. I literally was 
I, I killed myself so many times. I died so many times. I sacrificed myself so many times already that I know that not, like nothing can happen. Like, if Hashem wants me to stay alive, so nothing will kill me. And with that inner faith that I have in myself, that I understand it, I know what Hashem wants for me. It's obvious, it's clear for me what Hashem wants. If you still have doubts what Hashem wants from you, okay, go ask Him until you will know. But if I see that people from the four wings of the earth are calling and, and reaching out to us and sending emails, hey, you saved my life. I light candles in my own house. I'm singing in front of the Chanukiah and you have thousands and thousands of people that are saying thank you, thank you, thank you. What was I doing? I want to ask you something else. What is the purpose of us lighting the Chanukiah? That the light will shine to the outside, to the dark places. So if I'm lighting my Chanukiah and you have only on Facebook more than 3,500 views, means 3,500 families that saw the light of my Chanukiah. <coughs> so I was for sure doing something right. Because that's the purpose of the Chanukiah. To turn on the light, that the light will shine into the darkness, to the outside. And if we're receiving messages from people that are saying, Wow, thank you. Now I feel I have a family. Now I feel I'm not alone. Thank you. Now I feel I have a Chag, a holy day. Now I feel connected. Thank you for sharing. So what's going on? That's the redemption. And what are we doing that is so special? Except of trying just to do our best for the benefit of our brothers and sisters. Just to be there for every soul. For the ones that don't know how to turn on the Chanukiah, to turn on the lights of the Chanukiah, the candles. For the ones that don't have a clue about Judaism. They don't understand at all how to talk to the Creator, that it's even possible. Except of just sharing with who that we really are. There's nothing more to it. So just share. Share those videos. Share your own videos. Make your own vlogs, blogs, whatever. And share and talk and believe in yourself and be exactly who that you are. And believe that that is the will of the Creator from you, that you will be who that you are. Yesterday I'm receiving a message from a friend. I'm I'm Christian, but I'm 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 now much more into Judaism because I realize that it's the truth and I have a few questions for you if I can ask. Great. In one minute that person just his life been changed. That's it. Suddenly that person he's he's one with Hashem. For years he was going inside of a dream and inside of a, a fantasy, like there is something and like there is someone and like there is... And one day you open your eyes and you realize, hey, it's all a fraud. It's all a lie. It's all politics. It's all money. The truth is that you have a soul. And inside of your soul, it's your connection to the Creator. And to connect yourself to that, you just need to connect yourself to who that you are, to be who that you are. Oh, by the way, you want to put fill in? Put fill in. It's great. It's one of the most wonderful things you can do with your life. Great. Do that. You want to eat kosher? Amazing. Fantastic. Great. Also delicious. Great. No connection. Wonderful things. Shabbat. Wow. Seventh day. The best. Great. Do that. Light candles. Awesome. Fantastic. Great. I'm with you. Believe in yourself. My wife told me, for 15 years you're serving Hashem and you haven't become religious. I'm not trying to be religious. It's not my mission to become Dati, religious. It's not my thing at all. I'm trying to connect myself to the Creator. And that's what I'm doing. And that's the results of my actions. I am very close to Him. Why? Because I'm just trying to come closer to Him every day more and more. The things that you do, those are the things that will happen in your life. 
If you want to believe in Hashem, you will believe in Him. If you want to see Him, you will see Him. If you want to talk to Him, you will. If you want to be answered, you will be answered. Just don't drop your will. Be loyal to your inner will. Be loyal to who that you are and don't back off. From become that person that you want to be. You want to be a pilot? You will be a pilot. If you want, you will be a pilot. You want to be righteous? You will be righteous. You want to be religious? You will be religious. You want to be pure? You will be pure. Just don't back off. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. You want to be rich? You will be rich. You want to have a complete faith and to be happy? Come back to who that you are. Because inside of yourself, that's the place of happiness. Inside of yourself, not outside. Nothing outside will make you happy. You can waste a million dollars in a night. You can throw away the, the, the biggest pleasures and satisfactions. Like in the next day, you're going to wake up and going to ask yourself, what was I thinking to myself? What, what's, what, was all, what was all of that? What was it all about? Biggest, fanciest cars, houses, villas, models, women, food, restaurants, money, casino, movies. What? You wake up in the next day and you ask yourself, am I stupid? That's how I'm spending my life. The answer is yes. Because when you're trying to receive satisfaction and joy from the external world, it's stupid. It will never going to happen. No matter how much you will have, you will be rich like Donald Trump. It's not going to make you happy. Happiness is something that you feel from inside. So you need to seek for that inner happiness. And if you will want it, you will have it. You will get it. Thank you. Hazak Baruch.